Hello and welcome to another edition of Tribulation Ready Survival. I am Michael. This will be the final video of our Basic Prepping 101 class. Um, it's going to be a combination of a little bit of water and shelter. We did, in our previous video, go over water a little bit. Uh, we're going to go into a little more depth here with the water and then we'll finish up with shelter and that will conclude the basic prepping 101 course um, and then of course what that does is allow us to expand onto the individual topics within those categories with that being said let's get on to the video okay so let's talk about water water is probably one of the most essential things that humans need and um, in an emergency situation, you're going to need, whether even if you're bugging it or bugging out, you're going to need a lot of water. Um, a lot of people, just for general reference, say you should normally be drinking a gallon of water a day. Well, give or take, uh, everybody's a little bit different. I don't drink a gallon of water a day. There's just no possible way that I personally can do that. Um, unless I'm really, really working hard. And then, yes, that's possible. So, um, when I say that, I'm just saying, when you work, the harder you work, the more water you're going to need. But if I'm just tooling around the house doing whatever, I'm definitely not getting a gallon of water. The fact is, water is very, very heavy. It's heavy. Each gallon of water weighs five pounds so in a bug-in situation you can store water so uh, you could do anything from storing the water in your bathtub to buying bottles of water which we'll talk about in depth more here in just a minute or uh, there are other places around your house that you can have water or store water now Let's talk about storing water for long term in your home. I mean, obviously, uh, in an emergency situation, your tap water probably isn't going to be available. If you have a well that is manually operated, good, good on you. Um, that's just not possible where I'm at. So I'm not going to talk about wells. But let's talk about bottled water to start off with. 20 ounce bottles of water, you can stack those, you can store those, those will last for quite a long time, um, depending on how you store them. But they create a lot of waste. So those 20 ounce bottle bottles are going to be everywhere. If you're in a long-term emergency situation, you have enough water to last, you know, three to six months, a year, that's a lot of plastic waste, um, which becomes a problem. Um, so one of the things that I would suggest is maybe in the short term, yes, 20, 20 ounce bottles, if you're bugging in, that would work great. Gallons of water work great. Um, but on the, the topic of gallons of water, uh, I would caution you. Okay. This is a lesson that I had to learn. I had to learn it the hard way. I will not buy my storage water in the milk jug looking plastic that plastic is not very durable we had to go through our storage stuff we found two of them that were leaking and they had been leaking very slowly over a long period of time which developed mold and then became a whole big problem so we're we switched all that out and we've started using these this plastic one gallon jug not only does it have a really nice durable handle you can reuse this jug fairly easily to carry water to and from but you don't have to worry about little tiny pinholes or you know dropping it if i drop this it's probably not going to break whereas a milk jug will just shatter to split open and you're going to have water everywhere a bad day to lose water so water is super important so I would recommend if you're going to go with the gallon jugs, these jugs work great. Um, they're very, very durable 
and I just can't speak enough about them. And they don't cost very much. Um, around here, they're a dollar plus, you know, dollar fifty, dollar twenty-five. But you know, you get five or six, ten years of storage out of these, and uh, you're doing okay. Plus, you don't have as much waste um, when you while you're you know while you're consuming it as you would the twenty ounce bottles. Now, continuing on the bugging in part. Um, you can move yourself on up from, for, for storage, you can move yourself up from the one gallon jug to the five gallon jugs, like the, the big delivery brand that, uh, water jugs that you can get or the returnable, exchangeable bottles. Those are great to have. Um, and you know, you can carry a lot of water, but again, that's a five gallon jug of water that's now 40 pounds that you're lugging around. That's a lot. And if you're having to go to a water source and come right back, this water gallon, the one hour or one gallon, is going to be so much easier to lug around and, and safer than a 40 pound jug. Um, but as far as in the house, yes, that's a great idea. They will store for quite a long time. And you can move yourself up onto those big plastic totes. Around here we call them IBC totes. Or you can move even to like 55 gallon drums. The drums that I'm talking about are food grade water barrels that you can store in your home. They come with pumps and all that. They look similar to the ones that if you go watch my video about rain barrels, they look very similar to that. Um, Matter of fact, mine are food grade barrels. Um, I just choose to use them outside. Uh, but understand, <clears throat> in that video, once those things are full, a 55 gallon drum is not movable by one person. They weigh 400 pounds. Again, that's a lot of weight. Water's heavy. So if you're gonna do that, you're gonna have some place uh, where you can store a giant barrel uh, in your house somewhere where the temperatures you know don't fluctuate a lot you don't want it freezing you don't want it getting really hot um, so you're gonna have to have that and figure that one out but I wouldn't recommend going up that high um, mainly because you know if you have if you have a leak and you have 55 gallons of water all at one time you're gonna have a flood you're gonna have a problem and you just kind of got to think about those things ahead of time. Yes, they're great to have, but what's the trade-off when, when I go big, okay? So, like I said, um, it's windy here and people are making noise out of there. So, But that may be an option for you. Um, but you just got to kind of got to sit down and figure out how and what you want to do to get that water storage at home. Now... This uh, water storage uh, could be anything, even I would encourage you to look into something called Water Bob. In an emergency, it is a fairly decent plastic container that you put in a bathtub. It fills up with, I think it's 100 gallons of water. Um, and so you can literally have that sitting there. But storage of the water that has uh, been placed in the container by you needs to be treated. That's my recommendation and I use a product called Aquamira. They're not a sponsor and I'm not promoting them. That's just what I use. It's a two-part oxidizer that you put in. You have to do some math to figure out how much to put into each size of container. Swirl it around, let it sit for a few minutes, and then store it. I usually get about five years of storage by doing this method. And we can go over that maybe in a later video. But uh, that's what I would recommend some sort of water treatment for long-term storage of water. And rotate your water out just like you do everything else. Uh, in, in this case, I do every five years and it works just fine. Uh, so, that uh, covers pretty much bugging in. Let's talk about bugging out. Again, 
Don't forget, water is very, very heavy. Five pounds per gallon. So you're not going to, if you're deciding to bug out, you know, you can grab a couple of these and maybe, you know, for a while, but you're, you're going to need something that you can get water on the run. So you can think about water sources from point A to wherever you're going. I would look for rivers that are flowing, streams that are flowing, creeks that have water coming in and going out. And I would also look for even some sources like cemeteries. Cemeteries always are watering their yard, whatever. There's probably going to be some water storage or at least a, a spigot somewhere that you could access. Probably uh, other public facility buildings that people aren't uh, around. Those may be options for you. Um, there are so many places that you can get water on the run. Uh, but again, I would recommend before consuming any of that water to have something like a filter. At the very least, a filter. Uh, because, you know, filters do do their job they filter out certain things but there are certain things that filters are not going to be able to do for example here in Kansas just about every stream flows from a field somewhere it originates in a farmer's field or goes through a farmer's field or goes through a feed lot and I'm not even joking we have a stream right over here looks really nice but I know for a fact two miles up the road there's a feedlot that drains right into that. Yeah, I'm not drinking that. Um, if I have to, at the, it would be the last resort for me. I would filter it one, and then I'm going to boil it. And it better be clean water, because that's going to kill you if you don't. Um, it will make you sick, and you will have the worst diarrhea uh, you've ever had. And uh, it, it's going to kill you. Uh, you'll get dehydrated and die. Uh, so that's not an option. <laughs> that's not an option really around here. So carrying water a gallon or two maybe, uh, but knowing from point A to point B how to get there and to at least filter the water. We've given out water straws or life straws on this channel. Um, you need to, you, if you even get, they even have ones that you can put in a bottle that you can squeeze through or uh, like Sawyer makes a squeeze bag that works pretty well. Um, there are lots of options out there. But when you're on the go, you can't just have a filter and start, you know, now's the time to learn how to use it. If you're going to do that, you need to practice with it, know how it works, and be able to use it effectively while you're out there because when you're in an emergency situation isn't the time to start learning how to use your gear. So water filters are, are a great tool to have and they're absolutely important if you're going to be out there. Um, especially since it's, you're probably not going to have trusted water sources. There are uh, lots of options for carrying water in a bug out situation. There's camelbacks, there's you know all kinds of things. Um, but again, knowing your surroundings, knowing where you're going, uh, understand that I believe and I know that God is going to provide for us at, at, our, at the time that we need it. He's continually done that in my life, my family's life. I've seen it with other people. He provides when you need it. And he provides it sometimes ahead of time to be prepared for these things. We've talked about that many times on this channel. So, with that being said, we will do the best that we can and we are going to rely on God to provide us the things that we need. So that covers water in the bug out situation of bugging in and bugging out. Let's talk about shelter now. If you're bugging in, well, pretty much shelter is taken care of. I mean, if you've got a roof over your head, at the very least, okay, so there we go. Uh, 
Bugging out. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Bugging out. Let's talk about shelter. If you're in a bug out situation, there could be multiple reasons why. Either there is some sort of emergency around you, or you're in a fleeing situation where you're fleeing persecution, whatever the case may be, you are not necessarily going to be able to have a roof over your head. And <clears throat> if you're in that kind of situation, you need to have something that's small, light, portable, and easy to use. So, there are a couple of options out there. Um, the first option, which most people uh, who are preppers are not necessarily skilled with, is bushcraft. You can make a temporary shelter out of trees and limbs and debris and all kinds of stuff, but guarantee you that's going to take a long time to do and you have to have the knowledge for it. Uh, that is a skill that I am going to continually work on and uh, you can learn along with me when I start doing those videos. But, <clears throat> to cover all those bases that I just discussed, there are two options that I'm aware of, that I'm familiar with, and that I use. Number one is a tarp. Tarps don't weigh a whole lot. They're easily foldable, packable. You can carry them in your hands. You can put them in, you know, whatever. They're, they're, they're easy. Um, but if you're going to go the tarp method, you need to not spare an expense. Don't buy the dollar store tarp because it isn't going to last very long. Don't buy the cheapy, cheapy ones from the cheap tool store and those probably aren't going to last either. You're going to need to spend $15, $20, $30 on a good size tarp that is very durable and is going to last because really all you're trying to do is keep the water out, keep insects out, and give yourself a place to take a break and get out of the elements, keep the sun off of you, and have just the bare minimum shelter and you can have you know maybe you can put the tarp over you there's all kinds of ways of rigging a tarp that you can have uh, that shelter and we will be going over some of those ways in future videos but I'm telling you right now at the bare minimum and probably one of the easiest best ways is a tarp now here's another option that I'm also familiar with and that I will be using this is a hammock. It is a really nice parachute material, so it is fairly waterproof. It's very light. It will make a hammock between a couple of trees, but you can also make this into a tarp as a tent. It will pitch very well as a single person or maybe a two person tent if you rig it the right way. And we will be doing videos on that in the future. Now, this tarp, you can pay anywhere from, I mean this tarp, this hammock, you can pay anywhere from $20 up to $120 plus for different types of tarps, or different types of hammocks. Depending on what you want, depending on how much you have to spend, I spent $30 on this. And it works amazing. If you are a person and you're alone or you're by yourself, you might want to get a one-person hammock. This one is a two-person hammock. I don't put two people in it. It will hold up to 600 pounds, but it gives you that extra material just in case you need to put your gear in there or you're a little bit wider or a little bit taller. There's all kinds of options with a two person hammock even if there's one person so I would recommend if you're gonna get a hammock you're gonna go that route you should probably get a two-person hammock I'm I'm you will not be disappointed and it doesn't weigh anything throw it in a bag throw it, it even will fit in a big cargo pocket or whatever I mean it's just out of the way and uh, so those are two methods that I would say uh, work great as far as shelter out in a bug out situation but if you know your surroundings or you have some ideas there are other things out there there are other structures that you may come upon such as 
sheds, uh, abandoned barns, uh, concrete culverts. You know, there's, there's things that are out there that could also be used as a temporary shelter. So don't think that I have to carry, you know, just if you don't have a tarp, there, you know, you can get creative. You can find these things along your journey. And again, God is going to provide us the things we need when we need them. Um, shelter isn't uh, necessarily a permanent place. And if you're in an emergency situation or a fleeing situation, you're not going to want to spend time to rig all this stuff up and make it pretty. And you're not going to be spending two, three hours, you know, making a shelter. You want something up in about five minutes that you can take down in 30 seconds and be down the road. Um, that's what you're going to need. So that concludes all of the God, food, water, shelter ideas. Those are the, that covers the basics, the very basics of God, food, water, and shelter. So from this point on, we're going to focus on those areas. We have got the ground level nice, ready, and prepared. We have hopefully instilled some thoughts into your head about ideas to think about in case those things were to happen and maybe what is best for you. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video.